Alright guys, Dominic here for Kick Guru, and today we're checking out resizable bar performance on NVIDIA's RTX 3080 and RTX 3090. As I'm sure many of you guys are aware by now, resizable bar is a feature of the PCIe interface which allows the CPU full access to the GPU's VRAM, when without it, it would be restricted to accessing only 256 megabyte chunks. Despite actually being part of the PCIe spec for several years now, it wasn't until AMD released its RGNA2 based GPUs that resizable bar really hit the mainstream. There, AMD called it Smart Access Memory, or SAM, and it was available to users with a Ryzen 5000 CPU, and later to those with a Ryzen 3000 CPU. Now though, Nvidia has joined the party. We first saw resizable bar on an Nvidia GPU with the RTX 3060, but as of the 30th of March, anyone with a 30 series GPU can download the latest driver and a new vBIOS for their GPU, and access the technology. Nvidia also supports both Intel and AMD CPUs, provided you have a 10th or 11th gen Intel Core CPU or an AMD Ryzen 5000 series processor. Interestingly, Nvidia also claims it is actually pre-testing games and only allowing resizable bar or rebar to work in those games as long as it sees a positive performance impact. So that means there's this allow list with currently 17 DX12 games on that list, but Nvidia does tell us it is going to be validating more games and enabling that through future driver updates. In this video then, we are going to be testing five of those games with the Asus TUF RTX 3090 and the TUF RTX 3080 at both 1080p, 1440p and 4K. First, we'll test with rebar off, and then again with the technology enabled to see what exactly it will do for your gaming performance. All of our testing was done on our regular GPU test system provided to us by PC Specialist. This is based around the Intel i9-10900K overclocked to 5.1 GHz on all cores. That's paired with the Asus ROG Maximus 12 Hero motherboard, and we also have 32GB of Corsair Vengeance DDR4 memory clocked at 3600 MHz. For all of this testing, we used the latest driver at the time of our benchmarking, which was the 465.89 driver. Kicking off with Assassin's Creed Valhalla then, at 1080p we can actually see solid performance improvements for both of our GPUs. The RTX 3080 got a 6 FPS boost from rebar and that works out as a 6% increase, while the RTX 3090 saw performance improve by 7%, from 98 FPS up to 105 FPS, so it's a decent start here. At 1440p, the margins are again pretty similar, with both GPUs still seeing decent improvements. The RTX 3080 is 6% faster with resizable bar enabled, while the RTX 3090 is now 5% faster, delivering an extra 4 FPS on average. At 4K though, the margins do shrink, especially for the RTX 3090, which proved just 2% faster with resizable bar enabled, and that's a difference of a single frame. The RTX 3080 was 3 FPS faster with rebar, but either way, the difference is hardly significant. Cyberpunk 2077 is next to cover, and at 1080p we are once more seeing a small boost for both of our Nvidia GPUs. The RTX 3080 gained an extra 5 FPS, which works out as a 4% boost, while the RTX 3090 gained an extra 5% performance, up to 131 FPS from 125 FPS originally. At 1440p, however, the margins are more muted. The RTX 3080 only gained 2 FPS, which is an extra 3%, while the RTX 3090 barely improved by a single frame, so that's just a 1% difference compared to rebar disabled. Increasing the resolution to 4K, here the RTX 3090 actually proved no faster with rebar enabled than it did without the new technology. It averaged 45 FPS with or without resizable bar. The RTX 3080 though was a single frame faster with resizable bar, but that's really not a difference you'd notice in the real world. Yeah. <laughs> 
Moving on though, we come to Gears 5, and this is actually one of the games where we see very little difference with resizable bar enabled. At 1080p, the RTX 3080 sees just an extra 2% performance with rebar turned on, while the RTX 3090 doesn't gain anything at all. It averaged 156 FPS both with rebar on and with it turned off. At 1440p, it's much the same. The RTX 3080 does see a small gain, but it's only an extra 3 FPS, moving from 109 FPS up to 112, so it's hardly a game changer. The RTX 3090 also gained an extra 2% here, but neither GPU is really benefiting much from resizable bar. And then as we step up to 4K resolution, the difference comes down to just a single frame improvement for both of our GPUs. At that point, we really are getting to within our margin for error, so we can't really point the finger at rebar here. It really is just a negligible difference. Hitman 3, on the other hand, does show some very interesting results. At 1080p, both the RTX 3080 and RTX 3090 see negative performance scaling with resizable bar enabled. In fact, the RTX 3080 is 11% slower when using resizable bar, while the RTX 3090 loses 13% of its performance. Frame rates are still very high in Hitman either way, but clearly negative scaling is something we want to avoid, and something Nvidia says it is specifically on the lookout for. So what exactly is going on? Well, after rerunning the benchmarks several times, I might add, and finding the exact same thing every time, I did some digging and it does appear that resizable bar is adding a bit of CPU overhead. If we compare CPU and GPU utilization side by side, with resizable bar enabled, GPU utilization is generally a bit lower than with the technology disabled. And we can also see CPU utilization tends to be a little bit higher as well. So that certainly does indicate a bit of a CPU bottleneck. This is definitely something I want to look at further in the future as it is potentially significant, especially for those with less powerful CPUs than the 10900K. Moving on to the 1440p data in Hitman 3 though, we can again see negative scaling for the RTX 3090, though this time it's just 5% worse with rebar enabled, so the margin is shrinking. The RTX 3080 on the other hand is now 2% faster with resizable bar, so the performance regression only affected that GPU at 1080p. At 4K, where even the RTX 3090 is now strictly GPU limited, performance is fractionally better with resizable bar enabled for both GPUs. Even then, we're only talking about a frame or two difference, so it's hardly anything to write home about. Finally, we close out with Red Dead Redemption 2, and at 1080p, it is fair to say the performance gains from resizable bar aren't actually that bad. The RTX 3090 gained an extra 6 FPS, which is a 5% improvement, while the RTX 3080 also saw an improvement of 4%, from 106 FPS up to 110 FPS. At 1440p, it is more or less the same story. The RTX 3080 gains an extra 3 FPS from resizable bar, so that's another 3% improvement, while the RTX 3090 gained 4 FPS, which is a 4% bump. These differences are definitely outside of our margin for error, but at the same time, neither improvement is a real game changer. Lastly, at 4K, the relative improvement for both GPUs is now just 3% with resizable bar enabled, as both gain an extra 2 FPS on average. Once more, that is a pretty negligible difference, and I have to say it is fairly typical of overall performance gains when using resizable bar. So then, that is it for our quick and dirty look at resizable bar performance on the RTX 3080 and RTX 3090. We have already covered rebar with the RTX 3060 back in February, and the performance scaling looks very, very similar between all three GPUs, as here we saw no more than an extra 7% performance gained when using the technology. If anything, the most interesting result we saw today came from Hitman 3, where performance actually got worse for the 3080 and 3090 at 1080p. 
that does appear to be a bit of a CPU overhead issue when rebar is enabled, but that is going to be something we want to look at closer in the future as it's hard to say for definite without testing more games and seeing more examples. For now though, if you do have a 30 series GPU, in all honesty, resizable bar isn't going to do that much if you do decide to enable it. Of course, an extra few percent performance in most of the games we tested obviously isn't going to hurt, but at the same time, it's not doing a whole lot extra for your performance. And you will just want to make sure that performance is actually going up instead of going down. That is it for this video though guys, so if you liked it, toss me a thumbs up and of course, leave me a comment down below. Do you have a 30 series GPU and will you be enabling rebar? I would love to hear your thoughts. You can also find a link to our Discord down in the description where we'd love to chat with you guys. Feel free to ask any extra questions you might have on our testing. And while you're there, why not check out our merch store and even consider backing us on Patreon where you can see some of our content early as well as get access to some exclusive giveaways. Until then though guys, I'm Dominic4KitGuru and I'll see you in the next video.